everyone. Uh, welcome to day six of the Advent Ghost Story calendar. Uh, oh. We are going to talk about one of my favorite stories by Marganita Lasky called The Tower. And I have so much to say about this. I hope I can keep it together. Let's talk about the fact that craft-wise, because most of you are writing ghost stories, this story is brilliant in its ex execution. It sends you off in one direction and gets you so focused on this woman and her agoraphobia, claustrophobia, and oh, what's this other phobia? Bathmophobia, which is a fear of falling downstairs, that you kind of forget some of the details that were explained early on. And this story comes crashing like a, a bucket of ice water at the very last sentence. And I'm not going to give it away, though it's so tempting, but uh, there will be links to uh, Tony Walker's audio version of it as well as a written version. He, he put out a PDF version of it as well, so you can read it and find out what the catastrophic, cataclysmic ending is. It's wow. Before we get into the story, though, a little bit about uh, Lasky herself. Uh, she was born in Manchester, England in 1915, and she died in London in 1988. Apparently she was a smoker. She died from lung cancer. Uh, in her lifetime, she was a journalist, a radio panelist, and novelist. Her most notable works were Little Boy Lost, 1949, and The Victorian Chaise Lounge, which... The Victorian Chaise Long is a book describing the experience of an invalided young woman who wakes up in the body of her alter, alter ego 80 years previously. It is described by Anthony Boucher as relentlessly terrifying and as disturbing and compulsive by Penelope Lively, novella plays on the fear of the unexpected and the unknown. Um, it was also described as an admirably written book, highly skilled in its economic evo evocation of time, place, and character, and a relentlessly terrifying one. However, if you look for a collection of Lasky's works, I tried and I didn't find anything because I thought, wow, wow, the tower was so great. She's got to have more. And I, I don't think there's a collection of Lasky out there. But if you find one, please let us know. But let's get back to the tower. <laughs> we start the story with Caroline. And one of the intriguing things of this story is that it doesn't start out being gothic or creepy at all. It sounds very la-di-da about Caroline, who's married, newly married to Neville. Um, they've only been married for three months. And they are in Italy. He is a cabinet member and a part of the British Council. And she's sort of the tag-along wife uh, while he's having all these important business meetings. And from the get-go, we spend quite a few pages uh, sort of investigating their relationship. They've only been together for three months, but already you can tell that he has culture and sophistication and she doesn't feel like she's on the same level with him at all. And she wants to try to impress him uh, by spending the day. She takes the car for the first time um, by herself. This is apparently a big deal. And she's going to go off uh, exploring. Now, really, what she would like to do is just go visit the shops in town. But he says that's too pedantic and he wants her to learn culture. So she takes the trusty guidebook and she decides that she's going to go see some sites. And... So the first part is establishing her relationship with him, which we realize is not on solid ground. Um, she's trying very hard to impress him, and she's obviously some kind of trophy wife. So after she has uh, visited a few places, and here's a, an interesting part. Um, true, he was certain to know all about the campaniles and the frescoes, but there was just a chance that he hadn't discovered the crucifix and how gratifying if she could at last have something of her own to contribute to his constantly accumulating hoard of culture. But could she add still more? 
There was at least another hour of daylight, and it wouldn't take more than 35 minutes to get back to the flat in Florence. Apparently she has to be back at a certain time. Um, perhaps there would be just time to add this tower, and we find out that the tower is called the Tower of Sacrifice. Because that's where you want to go when you're off on your own by yourself in a strange country, right? The Tower of Sacrifice. Sounds like a good idea. Anyway, so she's off to investigate the Tower of Sacrifice. And interestingly, when she gets there, it says she's carefully driving along the gentle curves until she came to the fork for Florence on the left. So you get this feeling of, you know, sunshine, Tuscany, gorgeous scenery. And yet, suddenly we're faced with Florence and safety in one direction and looking up the hill towards this impressive and imposing tower. There was no other building in sight. In a land where every available piece of ground is cultivated, there was no cultivated ground around this tower. On the left was the fork for Florence, on the right a rough tack, excuse me, a rough track led up to the top of the hill. Caroline knew that she wanted to take the fork to the left, to Florence and home and Neville, and said a certain urgent voice inside her for safety. This voice so much shocked her that she got out of the car and began to trudge up the dusty track toward the tower. Now this is the beginning of the weird, because everything inside her told her no, she wants to do the right thing and be safe, but something is telling her, well, that's, she wants to prove something to herself. And so she ends up going to visit the tower. Well, the rest of the story gets gothic and creepy very quickly. She gets into the tower. There's nobody else there. It turns out that the tower is very dark inside, very rustic. There are no banisters or security rails or anything. It's very, you're on your own. And apparently there's the steps and then a sheer drop. But she keeps pushing herself that she's gonna do this and she's gonna prove to Neville that she accomplished this. And she's hoping that there will be some terrific payoff at the top with a fantastic view. So she keeps climbing these steps. Now we've told, been told in the beginning that there are 470 steps. And that takes a long time. And as she gets closer and closer and things are pre getting precipitous and she looks up and she realizes that the slats in the, the walls are too high to be able to look out. So there is no exterior view. You can't see out. So she's stuck inside this tower going up, creeping along the walls. There's nothing to hold on to. The, the steps are kind of precarious. And now she's frightened, but she's determined that she's going to make it to the top. So all of this time you're thinking, well, great, this is a story about a woman overcoming her fears of agoraphobia, claustrophobia, um, and bathmophobia, the fear of falling downstairs. So all at once you have the fear of heights because we're going up. You have the fear of falling off. There's always a voice telling her you could just jump um, and be done with it. Just go off the edge and be done with it. And the fear of being in a closed space because it is a tower and being okay, in its dark. So atmospherically, this story is terrifying. If you have any spatial relations problems, this just, ooh, you can feel it. You just get so involved with it. And she finally, finally, very difficult, she makes it to the top. And she finds out that there is no fabulous view. There's, there's walls and it's too high and you can't see. And now the terror is that it's really getting dark. And now she turns to look back down and it's really dark down there. And now she's got to go back down all those stairs. And at one point, uh, she, she's 
reaching for the banister, but there is no banister. She's gripping the wall to feel her way down so hard that she's bleeding. Her hands are bleeding. And you get so caught up in this poor woman and is she going to get down out of the tower that you don't remember that there was the part in the beginning that mentioned that the tower was built by somebody who dabbled in black magic. And I'm not going to tell you any more about that at this point. However, I will say that the um, if you look at critiques of this, feminist-wise, there are all kinds of... Uh, hints in the vocabulary of it that she is feeling lesser than Neville, that Neville's a bit of an ass, frankly. Um, that she feels this constant need to prove things to him. Uh, one important point is that usually when you set a goal and you achieve a goal, you feel some kind of satisfaction about it. But with this story, Caroline sets her goal to climb the tower but she climbs to the top and there's no glorious, satisfying view. It's even more terrifying to go down. In fact, she has to sit down on the stairs and hyperventilate for a little bit. And I won't tell you what happens at the end, but um, let's just say that perhaps if this is analogy and it is a feminist story, that it's saying that uh, no matter how far women have gone, that it's unsatisfying to try to make it to the top because there will be something that will get in your way that um, it's a man's world and you really can't succeed. Um, so I don't know. I kind of don't want to put too much feminist slant into it, but it certainly is there if that's what your persuasion is. Um, I do feel that the whole climbing the tower and then having to go down and down being more terrifying and always the, the fear of failure, the fear of falling, or in fact giving up and jumping. Um, there, there are layers of scary in this story, but the last sentence is the real kicker. But I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to read it. Have a great holiday. Bye.